Hi friends, today we're going to do a reaction to an amazing song. So amazing that sometimes if you watch my previous videos, if a song is so amazing and has such great imagery, I say this is the starry night, you know, the Van Gogh painting, the starry night of music, because you've never seen a starry night like that painting. But once you've seen that painting, you're like, oh yeah, that's part of my ideas. That's part of my inner imagery now. But this particular song, Famous Blue Raincoat by Leonard Cohen, it's the Picasso of music because Picasso is famous for the cubism. One of the ways to look at the cubism is that it's the same moment seen from different perspectives. And in this song, there are so many fascinating perspectives. So let's look at the lyrics and then I'm going to show you all the perspectives. We're going to peel it like an onion and then I'm going to show you the emotional parts of the song and I'm going to point you to cover songs that other great artists did and so you can see for yourself whether they fully were able to unlock the emotional content of some of the lyrics because in, with almost no other writer I almost think like hmm, if you just look deeper at Leonard Cohen's lyrics it's almost almost better than if it wasn't to a song of course that's an argument that's an empty argument like you can't really you know apples you know it's apples and oranges and you can't but it could be that way it, the poetry could be so good that having a more detailed focused look like we're gonna do now is actually better so let's look at his writing and let's look at those amazing moments of just devastatingly good writing so it starts out with these two lines and i kind of color coded it the blue is great storytelling, the orange will be just great imagery and just slice of life moments, which we'll see later in uh, the text. But first, it's four in the morning, the end of December. I'm writing you now just to see if you're better. Wait, wait, wait. When do you ever write letters to people at four in the morning? This must be a crazy letter. He can't sleep. He can't sleep. He's got to write this letter. This is an intense moment right plus how cool is it to be up at four in the morning doing stuff where you know i think most people will be sleeping and tired and groggy and but there are those magic times when you stay up and you stay up and you have a life after the day that's a cool day so there's it's cool but there's a set the setting is super cool with it's, he's writing a letter and first the first perspective is is this the perspective of the author? Are we taking a, you know, kind of a look behind the shoulder his, of him at the moment of the writing? Or is this already the person reading the letter? We don't know. The song never tells us, but we have to interpret the song. It's fun to look at the song in both ways because the song just actually opens up. There's going to be more perspectives. So, Okay, so much already happened in just two lines. Crazy. That's Leonard Cohen writing. Same thing yesterday we looked at Hallelujah. In the first two lines, it's like there's a relationship. There's God. There's King David. Oh, my God. Like, And not just here are the things, but like here are the things. And you can see the backstories to them, right? Just Leonard Cohen, it's just a... Uh, just listening to his music, you don't get to understand how good of a poet he is until you look deeper. And this just about never happens. It's like Leonard Cohen, Bob Dylan, no one else is like that, at least to my knowledge. If you think that somebody's on their level, please uh, post it in the comments. I would love to know and explore. And those are the kind of other reaction videos I would love to do. So let's look at other lines. New York is cold, but I like where I'm living. There is music on Clinton Street all through the evening. That's a, also a cool kind of vibe to this. It's not as in-your-face hard-hitting as the first two lines, but still, very cool setting, right? Like, you can actually picture maybe Leonard Cohen when he's young. This is a song from 1972, 73, and he's just young here. Let's keep going. You see, I hear that you're building your house deep in the desert, you're living for nothing now, I hope you're keeping some kind of record. So if we fast forward 
if you're listening to this for the first time, you don't really know who is the recipient, why the recipient exists. And actually, I will make the argument that just listening to the song, like I actually, when I just listen to the song as a listener, and I've loved the song for years, the story never quite hit me. It was a little bit more mysterious. The song sort of just went by, and I didn't get to understand the lyrics as deeply. But when I looked at the lyrics more deeply, I, st I realized, oh, it's a story of cheating. And there's three people here now, right? So we have more perspectives. The woman, the man, the, the original couple. And then we have that person, the third person, who you know, the woman cheated on. That's the story of the song. This line is addressed to the, the third, the, the supposedly the, the bad guy, right, who lured the woman. And so I hear that you're building a little house deep in the desert. You're living for nothing now. It's a bitter line, bitter line. You're living for nothing now. I hope you're keeping, keeping some kind of record. It's a gentle song. The song sounds gentle. And there's moments of just gentle, 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 kind of a resignation. And then, boom, bitterness or just coldness. And this is one of those moments. You're living for nothing now. But this is not the highlight of the song. Let's keep going. Here we go. Yes, and Jane came by with a lock of your hair. So Jane is the woman he loves. Came back with a lock of that third guy hair she said you gave it to her that night you plan to go clear did you ever go clear and this is a mysterious line or two lines from the song if you have an interpretation for what does it mean to go clear i originally thought it's you know stopping your bad lifestyle or stopping to do drugs or you know some people kind of want to fix their life whatever i i think this cheating person maybe they're a serial cheater kind of ruining multiple relationships maybe they want to fix their life in that whatever it referred reference desert maybe but if you have other interpretations this is the ambiguous part of the song where it actually might be interesting if you listen to the song maybe you see it from a different angle but still this is not quite the hard-hitting moment let's go a little further in the song and you see there's the the orange thing is coming up the orange text is coming up this is where it's going to be a little bit more hard-hitting and also here, ah, the last time I saw you, you looked so much older. Your famous blue raincoat was torn at the shoulder. You've been to the station to meet every train, and you came home without Lily Marlene. Now, Lily Marlene, it's a reference to a World War II song uh, about a woman who supposedly is faithful and waits, I think. It's that reference doesn't, is not so necessary for this song. And that famous blue raincoat, there was a supposedly a blue raincoat that Leonard Cohen left at his, his wife's or girlfriend's apartment. And it was stolen, like it's a real thing. This really happened. And so, you know, some that third guy is wearing that raincoat. And it's kind of interesting. Ah, last time we saw you, you looked so much older. Like it's a mutual friend. And that friend is not going through good times, right? You looked so much older. That's a cool line. You know, when people, you see them and they look so much older, you're like, well, you, you have even going through things. What's going on with you? And then the famous blue raincoat was torn at the shoulder. It's how subtle it's torn at the shoulder. But then, you know, that person is really not going through good times, right? Are they on the street? What's happening with them? Are they doing drugs? That's what I, when I heard this song at first as just a listener, and not interpreting it deeply, I thought it was drugs to the point of being homeless. Kind of taking like a nice coat and then we're sleeping in it in the street. That's kind of how I interpreted it at first. I think that's a misinterpretation probably, but certainly there's imagery, you know, turn on the shoulder. You see people living on the street. And then let's get to the orange text here because I've been waiting myself to get there. And look, and you treated my woman to a flake of your life. And when she came back, she was nobody's wife. Let's stop there and let's talk about that. For him, for that cheater, the third poor person, it's meaningless, a flake of your life. And 
I, I maybe wouldn't use the word flake. Flake, you know, uh, is a word that has many meanings, you know, corn flake, uh, flake of hair, fl flake of hair. It doesn't quite fit the mood of this song perfectly, but it does the job just, just enough, but it's not perfect, perfect writing like you're used to Leonard Cohen, but it kind of works. But to me, it sticks out as not 100% working. But anyway, flake of your life. When she came back, she was nobody's wife. Before she cheated, she was his wife, right? And when she came back, so you kind of like ruined that woman's life in some sense, or at least changed that woman's life for nothing, for a flake of your life, right? You really took a lot from that woman. But hold on, there, there's actually, this song is gonna build on this idea and it's gonna be more devastating. Well, I see you there with the rose in your teeth one more thin gypsy thief bitter look how cheap is that you know how we're we, you know there's this image of like don juan or the you know the romantic guys who have the rose in their their teeth and they're so full of themselves and they think they're so romantic but it's really such a cheap image it's such a cheap image one more thin gypsy thief nothing more than of course we don't want to call any people any bad names but Generally speaking, especially in the 70s, the stereotype is that, you know, they were known traditionally, you know, in Europe, throughout Europe, they were kind of known for thievery, black magic, all of these things. It doesn't matter here, but one more thin, also thin. It's almost like when I see that word thin, that word thin is amazing there because it kind of represents that this person really has so little to offer to the world that they didn't the world that didn't reward them with anything they made no money nothing and so they have no food right or maybe this is drugs thin gypsy thief stealing not things of course he stole the blue raincoat but he stole the woman so it's interesting this line is a short line it's a line you can just kind of you know let let pass you by in a song but it's one of the more devastating lines of writing well i see you there with a rose on your teeth one more thin gypsy thief Whew. and then hold on then the next two lines are so cool remember it's four in the morning and by the way now it's maybe five or six in the morning because it was four in the morning when the letter started and of course we don't know how long it took the author to write this maybe it's five in the morning maybe it's still 401, I don't know, but look, well, I see Jane's awake. He's still with this woman, right? They're still in the relationship. They're still in the same apartment. She's, she's awake. She sends her regards. Of course she doesn't send her regards, but wow, she sends her regards. That's so cold and it's so just real life. Like when you've completely cooled off from the situation and you're cynical, this is so cynical, though he's writing a letter to the guy with whom this Jane cheated on him. And she's like, Jane sends her regards. Wow. All in this song. Amazing. And again, remember, we don't know if Jane is reading this or this is still Leonard Cohen writing this. Wow. Wow. And this built, hold on. If you think like this is it, this built. Okay. So. Let's go to the next little bit of text. And you see, I have some orange on the bottom there, but let's get there. And what can I tell you? My brother, my killer. It's a friend, right? It's kind of a friend. They used to have a relationship. What can I possibly say? I guess that I miss you. I guess I forgive you. I'm glad that you stood in my way. This is interesting. I'm glad that you stood in my way. We'll get to that in a second with the next few lines. If you ever come by here, for Jane or for me. I mean, these are like not a strange, these are not strangers. These are the people who are friends. Well, your enemy's sleeping. That Leonard Cohen. And this woman, and his woman is free. You can have the girl. He's like, you can have the girl. Why? Wait, what? He can have the girl. Why? Why? Because in traditional settings, when there's a relationship and there's a cheating situation, what's the reaction? Anger, revenge. Rawr. We want to do something bad. We, 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 we don't, you know, the third person is a bad person. And of course, there's bitterness towards them in the song. But look at this. And his woman is free. 
and the enemy sleeping. Like it's cool. Come by, take whatever you want. Because the text in orange. Yes. And thanks for the trouble you took from her eyes. Okay, let's wait here. Thanks for the trouble you took from her eyes. I thought it was there for good, so I never tried. This is my favorite part of the song by so much because look, uh, this is a song about it's cheating, but it's cheating at a moment where the relationship has gone so stale that he doesn't really care if he cheated, if she cheated. And not only that, she feel he feels guilty because you know when you're in a relationship when it's great it's great but when it's stale you both kind of make each other a little bit more miserable and there you, and so he's talking about this trouble in her eyes and he couldn't fix it already right he, it says i never so i never tried i thought it was there for good so i never tried you know, you don't try that much at some point. At some point, you think, of course, I'm going to be amazing in this relationship. But at some point, you just get stale enough that you're like, I don't want to even try. But thanks to that guy who was able to solve it. And I, the, the level of sensitivity is, um, I think, what makes Leonard Cohen's writing and Leonard Cohen, this is a national treasure. Like the the level of sensitivity that I think you know, we don't have this in regular life. Like in regular life, we're all like, we're always strong. We're impenetrable. We have no emotion that is bad. We're always, always good things are happening to us, especially in the age of like Instagram and whatever. People don't post uh, kind of uh, vulnerable things. And if they do, it's cheaply vulnerable. Like, look at me. I was struggling and now I lost two pounds. Wow, I went through so much hardship. Right, but you don't see, you know, that's cheap, but you don't see this level of sensitivity and, and it's beautifully done. And I think you understand when you listen to this, you understand everybody's perspective. You understand why the woman cheated, you know, the relationship was just a relationship in name only. And that's why Leonard Cohen's reaction is, it's fine. And maybe that other guy is not a, such a bad guy because he saw it's a relationship in name only. And I think it's a letter of, many things right it's a letter of understanding it's a letter of forgiveness it's a letter of bitterness it's a letter of perhaps a breakup right because there's that line of when she came back she was nobody's wife even in name perhaps but they're still together you know obviously she just woke up but it's over and then he signs it when do you ever sign a letter in a song i've never seen that that's cool sincerely leonard cohen it's part of the song so there's so many perspectives through, and that's why it's kind of cool. It's This is the Picasso cubism of uh, music. And all in poetry, all super sensitive and just amazing. I actually, I love Leonard Cohen for that writing. I rarely get to see uh, such humanity in, in, even in poetry, which, you know, you, th you think poetry is about that, but still. Anyway, really interesting, I almost forgot. I'll also have in the description cover song, especially by Joan Baez of this song. She's a great, great vocalist. Like Leonard Cohen, he's great in his own right. But Joan Baez, what she used to do is she used to take these amazing songs, the poetic songs, by these singer-songwriter guys who, you know, they're not opera singers. And she had a much richer vocal range. Um, she's just a better vocalist. Maybe different. Let's say not better but different very different and my feeling is that she was able to bring out parts of the emotional content of this song especially now that you know what the song is really about and all these perspectives and all that happened in the song try that try that link that i'll have in the description of this video see how she's able to bring out the emotion and some of the lines by putting just different accents of, on some of the lines, but singing them in a richer, I think she has a richer, richer sound to her voice in her cover. And also what I would point your attention to is even in Leonard Cohen's song, which I'll also have the original in the description, look at how he uses the 
background singers, the backup singers, the female vocalists, to draw emotion from the song. And there's two different ways he does that, one towards the beginning, one towards the end. Really interesting touch on it that, again, really brings out the emotional content of the song. So thank you for listening. And of course, you know, on this channel, I have my own original music, which is inspired by likes of Leonard Cohen, Bob Dylan, Neil Young. So I try to create music that's set to great poetry. And I really put a lot of time writing lyrics for my own music. And I try to write music that has an emotional, a lot of emotional content uh, that you can create an emotional connection to the song. Of course, I'm, I'm not like these masters like Leonard Cohen, Bob Dylan, but still, I think my music can have something interesting for you and you can still enjoy it a lot. So I'll have the links to that, of course, in the description of the video and in the comments of this video as well, so you can't miss it. So give it a try. And of course, I'll appreciate you sincerely if you do, because that's, you know, I appreciate every listener of mine. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and a deeper dive into Leonard Cohen, who I'm just in awe of Leonard Cohen's writing and songwriting and poetry writing and the level of sensitivity. Just um, to me, for me, Leonard Cohen, Bob Dylan, they are the two masters of poetry set to music in the Western tradition of the 20th and 21st century. If you know somebody who you feel is on their level, please, please, please put their name, put their names in the comments. Let's have a discussion. Let's have a conversation. Maybe I'll discover some songs that I wasn't aware of. That's amazing poetry. And I'll do a reaction on that. So let me know. I, I love, you know, I sincerely like I'm a fan. Um, so we would just all learn and get more from it. So I'll see you guys. I'll see your comments in the I'll see your comments in the comments of this video and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.